Item number four, Walters Newborn Screening Programs. Thank you. Uh, treatment options for Hurler syndrome and Crab A disease are available, but early detection is crucial in order to give these children an improved quali quality of life. SB 224 would help to ensure a timely diagnosis. With me here today is Kathleen Scott with Hunter's Hope Foundation, Christina Levashev with Je Jetson's Legacy, and Dr. Barbara Burton, a professor of pediatrics at the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. I will now turn it over to them to provide you with more information and to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you today. My name is Christina Levashev, and I am the executive director of Judson's Legacy, which is a California nonprofit. And we're actually just, uh, we're focused on faith and hope and suffering. So I'm coming to you here today as a parent. So a little bit more of a visceral testimony um, as a parent of a child with Crab A disease. Um, I am a parent like any other parent, like many of you might be a parent. Um, and I, like every one of you, um, had my hopes and dreams for my child. Uh, my son Judson, and I'm going to show a picture here. These are two pictures you can see. Um, my son Judson was born on Christmas Eve 2004 with a perfect APGAR score. We brought him home Christmas Day and he was the most amazing gift. Um, he grew and developed like any other child and met all his milestone markers. He could walk and talk in many ways before his peers could. And uh, he, he was notable in many ways, but especially in his mind. And I wish I could show you the video, but Judson, um, we have videos on YouTube and on storyofjudson.com. So what I share is, is we can back it up with video, even though I am a proud parent and I'm going to be talking as a proud parent. Um, but in many, in many ways, Judson was a typical boy. He loved playing at our park, uh, playing in the mud. He loved roly polies. Um, but he also was particularly amazing with his memory and his mind and he was very sharp um, he he could uh, quote he could actually sing the national anthem word for word and he was only 29 months old um, he could tell you the make and model of every matchbox car that he would carry in his hand and run around with um, and he had an incredible sense of humor I remember one day I threw him over my shoulder and I put him in a fireman's carry and I said you're my sack of potatoes as I patted his buns and he said mommy I'm not a, I'm not a potato I'm a french fry <laughs> um, he was very bright very articulate and in many ways remarkable and I say this as a parent who began to dream and imagine what my son would become in this world I imagined that maybe one day he could be sitting up there well like you guys um, his mind was incredible and um, little did I know that he had a deadly disease lurking in his body at the age of 29 months, he was just before turning two and a half, in the spring of 2007, Judson began stumbling. Um, then he began overreaching and underreaching for things when he went to grasp them. We got him into the doctor. The second time the doctor said this is likely very serious, and they, um, they did an emergency MRI. And that started us on a journey of great, great pain. Um, Judson, we rode the journey of misdiagnoses, as these diseases that are rare can often um, be misdiagnosed several times. Uh, and then a month later, um, Judson was diagnosed with late onset Crab A disease. And uh, when they diagnosed him, the doctor said, your son is not going to get better. He's only going to get worse. Meanwhile, he's sitting there playing with his green truck with me and talking to me. It was hard to imagine that my son was going to be able to be losing everything, but that's in fact what they were telling me. He was going to lose every ability that he once had, every single one. And, um, and then they said, and we're going to put him on hospice care. And hospice care literally began the next day. Why? because he was already symptomatic and they said there is nothing that they can do. There's nothing we can do for your child. He already has symptoms. Um, just to give you an idea, Judson's mind remained completely intact as he began to lose everything. Um, as he lost his ability to walk, he would say to me, Mommy, I don't have my balance anymore. I can't stand up and he would cry in frustration. Um, as he was going blind, he said, Mommy, is it day or night? I can't see. He had no residual sight anymore. As he was, um, 
we could literally see the deterioration in his body from day to day. One day he would be playing with a puzzle, and the next day he would say, Mommy, my hands are too tired. I can't play with it anymore. Will you do it for me? And I will tell you that it was like torture, watching my son powerlessly, powerlessly as a parent, watching my son lose everything. Um, In a matter of five months, I want to give you an idea of how rapid this is. They're going to send around a picture. In a matter of five months, my son went completely from being completely vibrant and whole and healthy to being fully paralyzed where he couldn't even hold up his head to being blind and mute and then the critical functions in his body shut down and he died in my arms just five months later to the day from my first uh, doctor's appointment. And as I said, it's hard to even begin to express to you what this feels as a parent. But I'm here because there is hope for this disease and Judson's journey could have looked different. Um, Here's the clincher. Judson could have had a very different story if we had newborn screening in California when he was born. Newborn screening for Crab A disease. I'm going to share with you the story of Eric Haynes. This is Eric. As you can see inset in this picture, he's a, um, a swimmer. But I want to share with you that Eric has Crab A disease. Eric is 21 years old. He's a college student studying IT and computer science. He is also was a competitive swimmer in high school. Eric was diagnosed with Crab A disease in 1994. The reason he was diagnosed is because his brother Adam became symptomatic with the disease. They tested Eric for the disease, discovered that he had it, though he was not yet symptomatic, and they were able to do a cord blood transplant for, for Eric. And now this is Eric. Eric's brother Adam died in 1995, one year later because he was already symptomatic with the disease and there was no treatment for him at that point. Eric lives and thrives and Adam died. The contrast is so striking because Eric was able to be treated before his symptoms began. Now what I want to point out is the only reason Eric lives is because he had a sibling that had the disease. So you have families that are already losing a child, and then they are able to treat a child. I just want to point out there's another picture going around with lots of children with Crab A kids. Lots of children that are Crab A kids. Two of them are standing up. Those two children have been transplanted. And they were transplanted because they lost a sibling. Not because that the disease, these are families that have already been devastated by this loss and that is the reason they are able to do treatment for their kids. And these are beautiful, vibrant kids. Families are right now in California having to lose a child before they can treat their children. But SB 24 gives you the opportunity to make a difference for future Crab A kids in California. These kids can be left to a course of suffering and death like Judson, and you'll hear Jackie's story, or you can give them a chance at life, like Eric and Zoe and Scarlett. I just want to mention one more thing. My husband and I never imagined that this disease could be in our, in our gene pool and in our history. We had no, no, nothing in our, in our generational background that would say that there was any neuro, neurological disease, but it struck our family. We could have never imagined it. It was a shock. I want to point out that approximately one in every 100 people is a carrier of Crab A disease. And if you just take the capital right now as a slice of our world, there are people in this building right now that are carriers of this disease that we're talking about. That means that it might not befall their family in this generation, but it has the potential to in future generations. And you have the potential today to help make a difference for those families here in California. So I say um, to you as lawmakers, you have an opportunity to change lives. And I'm grateful to Senator Walters, who has taken up our cause and is making a difference for us. And on behalf of Judson and Jackie, who you're going to hear about, and Eileen and Chase and Jackson L and Jackson W and Gervais and Marois and Trevor and Zaley, these are all Crab A families I know. Not just random people I have actually met that have suffered from this disease. On behalf of all of them and all the ones that I don't know, I beg you to make a difference for the lives of future California children. 
Good afternoon. My name is Kathleen Scott, and I, after that amazing testimony, I will be very brief. Um, <clears throat> I am here as a representative of Hunter's Hope Foundation, that is um, the leading foundation that represents Crab A. I'm also here as a mother who lost a child to Crab A. Jacqueline, many of you um, were here last year when I testified in front of you and told you about Jacqueline's story. Um, I won't go into her story um, too much, but I will tell you that when we were here last year testifying in front of you, and while the bill was being authored, a little boy, his name is Garrett Blanchard, was born. Garrett, um, it took eight months for them to go through all the testings, numerous testings, to figure out that finally he had Crab A. And by that time, it was too late. So while Senator Strickland was authoring the, authoring the bill, a child was being born, and a child was suffering with this disease. Um, Garrett passed away from the disease five days after he was diagnosed. There wasn't even any chance to give him any sort of relief. These children literally suffer in pain every day, and that's part of the reason why early diagnosis needs to be um, done, is if they're not treatable, at least you can address the disease directly, and you're not sending them down a road of doctors trying to grab at straws, trying to figure out what it is that they actually do have, and treating them for different things and potentially harmful treatments to a child that has Crab A. While we were waiting for a Senate date last year, another little girl was born, Evelina. Evelina is still alive today. She lives in Wildemar, California, but she also went through five months of testing and found out she had Crab A. And she just got out of the hospital yesterday because like all of our children who go undiagnosed, they lose all of their abilities. She no longer can swallow, and so she had to go in to get a feeding tube and she just got out of the hospital yesterday. Each time I contact a family, it's I sh I'm the family support representative, so I'm in contact with all of our families that are registered with our foundation. And I can tell you that all of their, if all of them were here, they would be they would be saying exactly the same thing that Christina and I are saying, is that they didn't have the opportunity, they weren't given the chance. And now their child is either suffering needlessly, and I'm, I, it's an understate, I, there's just not a better word, um, there is a better word, I just don't know what it is about suffering, because it is torture. It's not just, um, you know, a child being uncomfortable. It's literally, they are struggling for every single breath that they take, and it is torture. And every single one of those families would say that if they were given the opportunity, if they were given the choice, for a treatment, they would have opted for it, every single one of them. So I ask you today to please, please support us and support this bill and give the children of California a fighting chance. Thank you. Please state your name. My name is Barbara Burton, uh, th and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be here today. I'm a pediatrician and a medical geneticist, so I come here with a little different perspective than the uh, women who've spoken before. Uh, but my experiences over the years caring for children who have metabolic disorders, including Crab A disease and Hurler syndrome, have made me a very strong advocate for newborn screening for these disorders. You've heard how devastating Crab A disease is, and you've heard that sadly there is no treatment that can be offered once symptoms have appeared. Yet, if we, we are able to make the diagnosis before a child is symptomatic, there is hope. Stem cell transplantation can be performed, and many children who are transplanted do very well, like the, the child who was illustrated here, who's a college student. Unfortunately, um, however, most parents don't have the opportunity to make that choice for their child. Most babies with Crab A disease are born into families with no previous history of the condition. Right now, today, we can offer treatment only to siblings born to families who've already suffered this devastating 
condition. Uh, New, York New York State has been screening all of its infants for Crab A disease since 2005. The state of Missouri began screening this past August. The state where I live, Illinois, has mandated newborn screening for Crab A disease, which will be implemented this year. We also have mandated screening for Hurler syndrome, also to be implemented this year. And the states of New Jersey and New Mexico have also passed legislation mandating screening for Crab A disease and a group of other lysosomal storage disorders, and all are in the implementation phase. So having heard this, why would anyone oppose newborn screening for the, this devastating condition? Some argue that it is too rare for screening. And my response to that is to say that even children with rare disorders deserve treatment, and treatment is only possible with newborn screening. Others also argue that treatment isn't good enough because stem cell transplantation is associated with significant risks, and some children die as a result of the treatment, or they have chronic medical problems as a result. And this is all true, yet, uh, we still need more research for, for, to develop better treatments for Crab A disease. Nonetheless, there are children who have very good outcomes, like the ones that have been discussed here. I myself have had the opportunity to take care of a family where a three-year-old child died of Crab A disease, having <coughs> lost vision, having lost all ability to suck or swallow, having frequent seizures. Uh, and the next child born to those parents who were already expecting when the child with Crab A disease was diagnosed was treated by transplantation at one, one month of age. And he's now a six-year-old who goes to school, he walks, he talks, he brings joy to his family. Um, because of the risks and the uncertain outcome, there are some patients who might not choose transplantation for their children. Yet, without newborn screening, parents never have the opportunity to make that choice at all, and the outcome of the disease is certain. There is no uncertainty. Those children die a prolonged and very painful death. Another argument brought forth against newborn screening is that some cases of late onset disease will be diagnosed where patients won't develop symptoms until later in childhood or adult life, and that produces a tremendous amount of anxiety for parents. That too is also true, and those families need access to excellent medical care, genetic counseling, and education uh, and to mitigate that anxiety. But at the same time, those children can be followed, and once symptoms begin to develop, as was true in Judson's case, Transplantation can be offered at that time, and those children can survive and have a good outcome. Um, the same things that we've talked about with Crab A disease are true for MPS1, also referred to as Hurler syndrome, where symptoms are not apparent at birth, but over time, children develop very devastating uh, problems with vision, with enlargement of the liver and spleen, with loss of developmental skills, loss of vision and hearing. And if the diagnosis is made early, the outcome can be excellent with transplantation. We have patients with Hurler syndrome who, instead of dying at five to 10 years of age, which is what happens if no treatment is given, we see them now as young adults with normal or near normal cognitive abilities doing very well. But treatment has to be made early, and many physicians are not familiar with these conditions because of their rarity. So diagnosis, unfortunately, is very often delayed, delayed for a long period of time, and patients don't have the benefit of the uh, treatments that we have available. Uh, Missouri is now screening all of, its in, all of its infants for Hurler syndrome. Illinois will begin later this year. There has been a pilot program in Washington State using anonymized blood samples that shows that the testing works. It is effective. It identifies cases with a low false positive rate. So there is experience with both of these conditions. 
Finally, there are those who argue that states should wait until the Federal Secretary's Advisory Committee on Heritable Disorders in Newborns and Children has added or has recommended inclusion of these two disorders in the uniform panel for newborn screening. Yet there is no reason to wait. And as you've heard, while we wait, infants continue to be born with these conditions and they continue to die as a result. The lives of California children can be saved right now. The Secretary's Advisory Committee, uh, of which I was a member for four years, recommends a core list of disorders which at a minimum should be included in all states' newborn screening panel. Newborn screening, however, remains a prerogative of state health departments and states dictate which disorders should be included in their own panel. Newborn screening has been a remarkably effective public health initiative preventing death, disability, and suffering among our nation's children, and I encourage you to make it even more effective by supporting Senate Bill 224. Thank you. Thank you very much. If we can have the remainder just uh, state their name and their position, please. Lydia Bourne representing the American Academy of Pediatrics in a strong support. Ask Thank for you. your eye vote. Alicia Sanchez with the California Medical Association in support. Thank you. Anyone else in support of the issue? Any opposition? Any comments or questions from the members? Uh, yes, Senator. Uh, Senator, I, I uh, was a co-author on a bill similar last year. Uh, if you take any amendments, I'd like to be added as a co-author, please. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other comments from any of the members? Do we have a motion? So moved. Moved by Senator Anderson. This is uh, do, do pass. Any, would you like to close, Senator? No, I just respectfully ask for your I vote and give these kids and their parents a fighting chance with this disease. Thank you. This is SB 224, Walters. Do pass to appropriations. Call the, uh, call the roll, please. Senator Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Anderson. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Uh, Anderson, aye. Bell. Aye. Bell, aye. De Leon. Aye. De Leon, aye. Desaunier. Aye. Desaunier, aye. Monning. Aye. Monning, aye. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, aye. Pavley. Wolk. Aye. Wolk, aye. That is eight. We have one absent member. We'll put that bill on call so they can add on at a later time. Thank you, Thank Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, committee.